Today's date is Tuesday, December 3rd, 2019. We're doing self-check 5.1. There were four questions, which means we had eight minutes. There were no calculators. Um, we had this definite integral between 0 and 4 of x minus 3 to take the antiderivative. I take the antiderivative of each of these pieces individually. So this is really, if I'm doing this very formally, I would say this is the definite integral between 0 and 4 of x, d of x. And then I'm going to subtract the definite integral from 0 to 4 of 3 dx. So taking the antiderivative of x, that turns into, and I'm going to come down here because I ran out of room, that's going to turn into x squared divided by 2. So x goes up power from 1 to 2, and then I divide down by that. And that's going to be evaluation bar between 0 and 4, but again, I can kind of combine those back into each other. Antiderivative of 3 is 3x, so minus 3x, and I can do evaluation bar on this whole thing from 0 to 4. And that's now going to be 4 squared over 2 minus 3 times 4. So that's what happens when I plug in 4. And then I'm going to subtract what happens when I plug in 0, which is 0 squared divided by 2 minus 3 times 3 times 0. And I have to actually do some math here. So 4 times 4 is 16 divided by 2 is 8. So it's going to be 8 minus 12 in that first set of parentheses minus zero. All this stuff is zero. And then 8 minus 12 is negative 4, so our final answer is C. Now is the time to ask questions. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Get it, not get it. Yeah, right or wrong. Oh, nice, cool. Uh, let's go on to number two. Um, antiderivative of this one, I have to first change its form, so this is a antiderivative of x to the negative 2 dx. And then after I do that, now I can take the antiderivative. This is going to go up a power, so from negative 2 to negative 1, and then I divide down by negative 1, which is the same thing as just putting a negative out front. Um, and this one, remember, if I don't have any definite integrals, I do need a plus c here. All right, so now that I've done that, I need to, I, uh, that's just the answer, isn't it? Do they have that? There it is, D. Questions? Thumbs up, down? Did you get it, not get it? All right, what was the mistake? I did not one. Uh, you saw one, of, yeah, so the antiderivative of one over x is always gonna be natural log of absolute value of x plus c, yeah. But if it's x squared, change the form and then make it. Yeah, again, you should, whenever you see negative 1, if you, I take the antiderivative of that, that's when you get natural log. Never with other numbers, negative 2, negative 3, etc., etc. Yeah. That's a good mistake to make. Now, hopefully, we won't make that mistake again, right? Cool. Let's move on to number 3. All right. It looks like product rule, right? Because I have an x and an x. But there's no inverse product rule yet until we hit BC calculus, and then it's called integration by parts. But when I do the integral here, I have to first distribute and then take the integral. So let's go ahead and distribute. And before I even distribute, know that the square root of x is the same thing as x to the power of 1 half. So when I distribute that, I'm really going to say this is going to be the still definite integral between 0 and 1 of... So x to the 1 half times x to the 1, I'm really adding powers. 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. So this is now going to be x to the power of 3 halves plus x to the power of 1 half. So all of that is still in parentheses dx. Again, being formal about mathematics makes it so that this dx, again, you think of that graphically as the width of each of these rectangles. That width has to be multiplied by the entire height. So all of this x to the power of 3 halves, x to the power of 1 half. That's the entire height. That's why I put parentheses around it. Height times width. You never just do dx times one of these and not times the other. All right, and then that's being pedantic. We're going on and actually solving this. I take the antiderivative. Antiderivative means it goes x to the power of, I add 1, or I add 2 over 2, and this becomes 5 halves, and I divide down, so it becomes 2 fifths. Again, dividing means I flip this. So that's the first term. And then the next term, I again add 1 or add 2 over 2, and I get x to the power of 3 halves. Divide down, it becomes 2 thirds. We don't have a plus c because we have a, uh, 
evaluation bar. You always have a C or an evaluation bar. You always have something extra. In this case, it's evaluation bar from 0 to 1. And let's see what happens. When I plug in 1, uh, 1 to the power of anything is always 1. So this is going to be 2 fifths plus 2 thirds when I plug in 1. Minus, and when I plug in 0, it's going to be 0 plus 0. So essentially all I need to do is add 2 fifths and 2 thirds and I'll get my answer. So just a reminder, if I'm doing 2 over 5 plus 2 over 3, I need to multiply the left by 3 over 3, and multiply the right side by 5 over 5, and I get 6 over, I can make this a giant, over 15 plus 10 over 15, which is 16 over 15, correct answer is C. All right, thumbs up, down, questions, errors, what were the errors? I guess. Guess on it? Everything. Everything. Did you, you got it lucky, guess? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Um, did everyone, oh, I guess the first step of distributing was the mistake that probably everyone made? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so if you ever have things that are being multiplied together and you're trying to go backwards, you need to multiply them together first and then go backwards. That's the lesson to take away from this one. All right, and then we're on to number four. So this one, it looks like it's going to be pretty difficult. That one was weird. Um, this one is going to be a tax man type of problem. Um, why do I need to use tax man? Or I guess you could use to use substitution as well. Well. Because it's not easy. Like, if there's something that's weird that's happening here, I always say it's when your dinner isn't equal to one. Um, but it's forgetting when the variable. Yeah, I guess taxman can be used more than just forgetting when your dinner isn't one. Taxman is when you kind of have something that looks weird. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of a better way to phrase it. I'll have to think about that. But I can rewrite this as the integral of e to the power of x times 1 plus e to the power of x to the power of negative 1, so there's no fraction anymore. And, oh, that makes sense now. So it's still dinner. So here's my inner, right? There's my inner. What is dinner? What's the derivative of that inner? Um, it's e house, so it's just, e -house. yeah, so it's just e to the x. Is e to the x 1? No, so you're still using taxman. So it's actually the same definition of taxman that we've always been using. So I'm going to use taxman on this one. So I need a u for this one. I need taxman, and I need u prime. So u is this 1 plus e to the power of x. Taxman, he's knocking at the front door. Here he is, e to the power of x. Whoa, what just happened there? Which is e to the power of x. Um, when I take the derivative of all that, I get e to the power of x. And check that out. It actually cancels out. So if I divide taxman by u prime, I get 1. So I'm going to pay taxman. This e to the power of x turns into a 1. So rewriting this is now the integral of 1, or just nothing, 1 plus e to the power of x to the power of negative 1. And now I'm going to actually take the antiderivative. So my outermost house is this negative 1. Ooh, whenever I see a negative 1, that means the going backwards, the antiderivative is what? Yeah, zero, and then you divide by zero. You can't divide by zero, which means you're, we're using that special rule. I can't divide by zero, so I take the, she said it? Natural log, yeah. So this is going to be natural log. Let's write it out. This is now equal to natural log of absolute value. Well, I guess they didn't really have it there because you don't have a domain error. Natural log of 1 plus e to the power of x. And yeah, don't forget your plus c in this case. You always either have an evaluation bar or a plus c. In this case, you have a plus c because it's not a definite integral. And where is our answer? Natural log of, there it is, b. All right, so I'm guessing that the main error was not, did everyone turn this into a negative power and not make it a fraction? So. Yeah, the two things that I want you to take away from this lesson is making sure that you always get rid of a fraction, always get rid of square roots, stuff like that, 
But then from there, noticing that you need to use taxman because my dinner in this case is not one. My dinner was e to the power of x. Right, so that's taxman. My dinner was e to the power of x. You'll be seeing a similar type of problem where you're going to use taxman in the next self-check. So try to get that one correct. We're going to get rid of a fraction or a square root and use taxman. Or use substitution if there is that type of problem. Questions? Questions? Um, thumbs? How many people got number four correct? Everyone got it correct. I guessed, though. Guess? How did you guys guess? I kind of like, I, I saw it first and I took like, everything out. Like, I, I know I wasn't being eaten, but I know I'm going to have natural one. Nice. You guys are really good guessers, and that is a skill that is highly prized on the AP Calculus test. The full first half of the entire test is all multiple choice. If you're a good multiple choice, Multiple choice test taker. Yeah, you're going to be doing good. Um, at the very top, I know there's not a room because you have the old version, but how many out of four did you get correct? Out of four. Fingers. Two. Two. Four. <laughs> Arrow. You did guess on two of them. You got lucky on two of them. Nice. Yeah, so two, two, and four. Nice. Um, let's go on to self check 5.2. All right, we are on to self-check 5.2. Again, it was eight questions, or sorry, four questions, eight minutes. Um, Antiderivative of x. It was x to the power of 1. It goes x to the power of 2. I add 1 and then I uh, divide down. There's the antiderivative. I need to take the antiderivative of negative 1. Again, I think of negative 1 as negative 1 x to the 0 because x to the 0 cancels out. So if it was x to the 0, it's now x to the power of 1. So this is minus x. And this is going to be evaluation bar between 0 and 3. So from there, we're going to go ahead and plug in um, when I plug in 3, I'm going to get 3 squared over 2 minus 3. And I'm going to subtract whatever happens when I plug in 0, which is going to be 0 squared divided by 2 minus 0. And notice that all is just 0. I can kind of cancel it out. Um, from there, we know that 3 squared is 9, so I have 9 over 2 minus 3. And that's the same thing as um, 9 over 2 minus 6 over 2. Um, and we have 3 over 2. Where is that? That's B. The correct answer is B. I don't know why I made it. Like, I got 9 over 2. Can I erase it because I was wrong? Oh, no. <laughs> so then I just kept what I, I did there. So many times. Like, I, like, gave up on it and circled B, and then I went back to it, and then I found, like, three mistakes. And then I circled B again, but I was pretty sure it was wrong. Oh, I got it. Oh, no. <laughs> no way. Got it right. Don't know what you did. Okay, so um, what were the things that we learned from this? I don't care so much what the errors were in terms of I'm disappointed because of this. Like, what can you learn from this? So, error, what did you learn from this? I learned to actually use this calculator. You haven't learned that before? No. I always forget. I often forget. Okay, you'll remember for the rest of the year now to read the problem. I don't You'll try to remember for the rest of the year to read the problem. All right, Sega, what'd you learn? Antiderivative of x is x squared over 2. All right, Gio, what'd you learn? Antiderivative of 1 is x. Okay, nice. I also have a question. I thought negative 1 was a constant. What do you have to do with Yeah, so constants, when I take the derivative, they turn into zeros. But when I go backwards, you ask yourself, well, if I take the derivative d dx of what? will give me 1, and the answer is x. So that means if I go backwards, 1 has to turn back into x. So constants are, constants worth, something are worth something when I go backwards, yes. All right, so moving forward to number 2, antiderivative of that guy. Um, again, this is going to go x to the power, and I go up power, so plus 1, and it turns into negative 2. I divide down by negative 2, and evaluation bar between 1 and 2. Next, I am going to plug in 2. So it's going to be, um, I guess, next, I, let's rewrite it a different way. I don't like negative powers because it makes me scared. <laughs> I'm going to change this to 1 over negative 2x squared. Now I don't have a negative power. I just move this variable down to the denominator and made it a positive power. And a still evaluation bar between 1 and 2. I haven't done anything. I haven't touched the evaluation bar yet. Now that I know x squared is really on the bottom, now I can plug in a lot easier. And this is 1 over, I'm plugging in 2 now, negative 2 times 2 squared. And then I'm going to subtract when I plug in 1, which is 1 over negative 2 times 1 squared. I guess I should be putting parentheses around this. It doesn't really matter so much in the operations down here. Um, and now I can actually 
evaluate this thing. So 2 squared down here is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So I have negative 1 8 minus, and then 1 squared is 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. So this is going to be negative 1 half. I have a double negative in this case. So when double negatives happen, it's really adding. And instead of 1 half, I can multiply that by 4 over 4. So it's really asking us what is negative 1 over 8 plus um, 4 over 8. And the answer is 3 over 8. All right, I guess I should really be asking, I don't know, I haven't thought of the, about this until three years of teaching. Not about whether you got it correct. Do you know how to do this problem with a thumbs up or thumbs down? Oh yeah, this this green step yeah. is that what messed you up? I think so. Okay. Um, so that's what you learn. Like, make sure you don't have negative powers when you're actually evaluating it. Um, Arrow, talk to me. I actually did this one. Like, like, All correct, one hundred percent. I think. All right, nice. Yeah, perfect. So you know what you're doing. Darn, so you didn't learn anything. Okay, Gio. Um, Be a little bit more specific. So do you know how to take the antiderivative? Yeah. Okay, so you knew that. Um, did you know how to make this negative 2 go down to the denominator before you evaluate? Possibly. Okay. Okay, so yeah. I uh, just ran out of time. Okay. Yeah, so next time, whenever we're doing evaluation, make sure that if I have a negative power, bring it down into the denominator or vice versa, depending on where it is. Make sure you have no negative powers when I do the evaluation. It makes it a lot easier. All right, so I would say that would be the lesson takeaway. Let's do number three. All right. The first step everyone shouts out is distribute that square root of x, which is really x to the one half. So rewriting this, I haven't taken the integral, so rewrite the integral. A little bit better than that. That's okay. So this is going to be x to the power of 1 half times x to the power of 1. That's x to the power of 3 halves. I'm adding 1 and a half, which is 3 halves. And if I multiply 2 times x to the power of 1 half, I have 2x to the power of 1 half. All of that still multiplied by the thickness dx. And now I can actually take the antiderivative. When I take the antiderivative, this now becomes... I'm going to come down here because I need more room. Yeah, so I changed this to x to the power of 1 half first because I, it's really hard to distribute square root of x with oh, normal x. Okay. <laughs> Good, all right. So and then moving on, we have x to the power of 5 halves now. I added 1, and I divide down, so it's really 2 fifths. Plus, and I still have that 2 out front. This is now x to the power of 3 halves. Divide down, it becomes 2 thirds, so 2 times 2 thirds. And don't forget your plus c. It's always going to have plus C e or an evaluation bar. Something is going to be at the very end. All right, now I can do something else. I can simplify, I guess. This just turns into a 4 right here. And we have our answer. Oh, I guess they're trying to factor some things out in some of these cases. Let's see if we can find our answer. 2 fifths. Oh, it looks like it's D. Yeah, we don't even have to do anything. Um, sometimes you do have to factor out an X. All right, do you know how to do this problem in its entirety? So you're giving me a thumbs up if you didn't learn anything. Maybe I should change this strategy. I'll think about it. Um, just talk to me individually. Arrow. For some reason, I thought that x to the 1 half minus x squared x. But I still got it right. Wow. Weird. Yeah, still got it right. Weird. Yeah. OK, but now you know how to correctly multiply x to the 1 half times x? For the moment. I will probably do this, but I don't know. OK. So, do you know to make this x to the power of 1? Like, if you write out the 1, maybe that will help you say, oh, 1 plus a half? OK. I'm just trying to help strategies. Like, you don't have to use that. Um, you have to add the exponents. Add exponents whenever you multiply similar bases. Yep. Sego, talk to me. It's just distributing the square root of x. OK. Um, did you do it correctly once and not the other, or did you do it incorrectly both times? I did both times. OK, so yeah, now you know how to do it correctly next time. 
And Gio, what'd you learn? Okay, cool. So same lesson as Tego. We know how to distribute correctly now. I guess all three of us, same lesson. Cool. All right. I'm glad that we're learning. Um, let's go on to number four. All right. So this guy, I need to rewrite it. I don't like fractions. So I still have that integral out front and it's x times the denominator, which is x squared minus four and make that to a negative one power. And now everything has no fractions. Still have that dx there to be formal about it. All right. That was the first step. And then knowing that I'm going to use taxman because my inner right here of powerhouse, my inner, well, it's not really powerhouse. It was secretly natural log house whenever I have a negative one there. Um, my inner here is x squared minus 4, which means my dinner is 2x, which is not 1, so I'm definitely using taxman. I can use u substitution if you guys want. Speak now if you want to use u substitution. No, nope. okay. So u is equal to taxman is equal to u prime is equal to, these are the three things we need to find. So x squared minus 4 is our inner, our u. Taxman, he's knocking on the front door. There he is, x. And if I take the derivative of my inner, x squared minus 4, the derivative is 2x. So you take the normal derivative. Normal derivative, yeah, for taxman. And now that I've done taxman, let's go ahead and say x divided by 2x. Well, those kind of cancel out there, and I have 1 half. So pay tax on this x turns into a 1 half. So this is just rewriting it. This is now the integral of 1 half of this giant guy, x squared minus 4 to the power of negative 1 dx. All right. I know I'm actually in secretly log house because I'm going backwards with a power of negative 1. If it was negative 2, it would not be log house. It's still power house. Um, now I'm taking the antiderivative. Uh, that 1 half stays out front. So this is now equal to 1 half and it's going to be natural log of absolute value of x squared minus 4. And absolute value, and we need a plus c because we don't have any definite integrals. And there's our final answer. Let's see if we can find it. It looks like the correct answer is c. So I don't care if you're able to guess it correct. Talk to me if you know how to do this problem. We'll start with Geo going backwards this time. I didn't know how to do it. Okay, so knowing that it needs to be a non-fraction negative one. Okay. Yeah. So that's a good lesson takeaway. Always make sure that you don't have a fraction by using negative powers. Stega, what'd you learn? So you know how the, the tax money can go up to the u prime of the 2x? Yep. And you cross them out? Yep. I didn't cross them out, so I just put 2x and I, w I got b. If I would have done the equals one half, it would have been Ah, okay. But knowing how to pay the tax money. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's a good so lesson I, to learn. I did. I know how to do it. I just forgot. Yeah, and we make those minor mistakes on processes that we've learned before, and now we know the process even better. Uh, and Eric, what'd you learn? I actually knew how to do this. Oh, perfect. So you know everything, didn't learn anything? Darn, well, maybe I'll get a harder problem for you next time. Um, that's all of today's lesson. That means we have 15 minutes to spare, which means you can either A, work on missing assignments, or B, do the speed sheet. Those are your only two choices, unless you guys can come up with a, a better way to spend that time.